Hey everybody, it's been a while since my last build video and I've got a bit of a backlog on ones to cover like the Galaxy, Vorcha, Sona Battlecruiser and a few others, but I wanted to get this one out of the way first. Most of the other builds are just differences in flavor on the same type of colony console beam overload type build, just adapted to bigger cruisers with maybe a little extra healing and hull capacity. I also covered healers pretty extensively, but I haven't really shown a solid Psy control build yet besides the free-to-play scryer that I put together on my other account. That's a little different since it's on a very, very tight budget. I'm still using colony consoles as my main source of healing, and that's not what most high-end science builds use. Instead, they usually use the trait plot armor from the 10th anniversary bundle. So the easiest way to obtain plot armor is just getting that 10th anniversary bundle whenever it comes around and it's a bundle that a lot of players already own because it has so many hero ships and a pretty solid array of traits and gear. Bang for the buck wise it's pretty good if you're into this game. I bought that bundle when it was uh, 18,000 zen which is a lot of money but it does include 10 ships uh, each of which has two traits and three of those ships are dual specs so uh, bang for the buck wise it's really really good. Uh, anyway, you don't need me to sell you on this bundle. You likely have already justified getting it, or you've decided it's too expensive for you at this point in the game, and nothing I say will change your mind, so... Uh, now, you can also get plot armor by choosing the Miracle Worker Flight Deck uh, Constitution class from the event campaign, but there's no way to get Temporal Anchor, which is the red gravity well, besides buying the 10th Anniversary Bundle. That said, while Red Grav is certainly very useful, it's not as easy as just slapping on a few gravity wells and suddenly you're winning in PvP, uh, as a lot of disappointed players have probably found out. One thing I heavily considered on my free-to-play account was to grab this trait with the event campaign so I could set up that scryer better. That would free up four console slots for better options later, so that's something to consider if you're on a tight budget and never intend to buy the 10th bundle. But for the purposes of this video, from this point on, I'm going to assume that everyone either has the 10th anniversary bundle or is going to get it, and that's kind of how I structured this build with that in mind. Consider this kind of an intermediate level build designed for players who already have the 10th anniversary bundle, maybe who aren't that into PvP and thinking about trying it out. So keep in mind I'd probably make some changes if I had a higher budget or some other ships and options and tailor it a little differently depending on playstyle, and I'll talk about that a bit more when we get to the consoles, because that's where that mostly takes effect. That's also why I'm using one of the dual spec ships from that bundle, the Legendary Voyager Warship, as my platform. This is a seriously good ship and has a high hull capacity compared to many other science ships, very good speed, and thanks to the Miracle Worker primary spec, it gains a free extra universal console slot. That really opens up a lot of options, especially with so many universal consoles being important for PvP. Really, the only thing I don't like about it is the tactical lieutenant seat, but I can manage with that. So let's dive into the equipment. In the front, I have the Gamma Reputation Wide Angle Inhibiting Chronoton Torpedo and the Plasma Particle Emission Torpedo. Those are both very easy to get and very annoying for enemy players. Another good option might be the Gravimetric Torpedo, which prevents enemies from activating Intel Team for a short time, something the Plasma Emission Torpedo implies it should do, but doesn't. The last forward weapon is the Advanced Radiant Anti-Proton Beam Array from Iconian Rep. This gets me a little bit of temporary hull, but I could also use the Discovery Dual Beam Bank, plus the Dark Matter Torpedo, maybe even mounted in the rear, for more outgoing damage, since that would give the entire ship 25% more crit severity in combat. My deflector is the Delta Reputation Deflector. This provides a good amount of hull capacity as well as boosting healing, including the heal provided by the plot armor trait. Then I have an inhibiting secondary deflector, in this case from the Fleet Colony, I think. The reason the inhibiting deflector is so good is that it isn't automatically cleared by damage over time cleanses, so even though it's less damage than a deteriorating deflector, it's a guaranteed hit. Then of course I have competitive engines, and the competitive core and shield, which is my favored setup. Uh, at the moment this is the innervated core, which has a control resistance rating, but I think the bolstered core might be a little bit better. 
Uh, the bolstered core improves the resistance to exotic damage sources like radiation, electrical, and fire damage, but I haven't earned enough competitive marks for that yet on this character. My shield is always the fortified shield. That gives an extra 20% hull capacity for 10 seconds when taking damage, uh, and it seems to go off pretty often, so it works really well. Uh, you could also use the Discovery two-piece here, the uh, Mycelial Core and Tilly Shield. Uh, that would get a good amount of hull regen, as well as dealing extra damage to shields, so that's a good option as well. For rear weapons, I have the Gamma Reputation Omni, which debuffs target resistances by 10 whenever I'm moving faster than they are. That works really great on a build like this, because if you get someone stuck or slowed in Psy Spam, uh, then you're always moving faster than they are, and they'll get that debuff. The next two rear weapons are the Trilithium Turret and the Trilithium Tricobalt Torpedo Launcher. They're just here for the three-piece set bonus with the console. And that's a perfect transition into the consoles. The third piece of the Trilithium set, Reinforce Armaments, provides a good amount of hull restoration and hull capacity. Uh, the hull restoration improves the effectiveness of plot armor as a heal, the two-piece adds some flight speed, which is always nice to have, and the full three-piece set adds another 20 hull capacity skill and a 20 all damage resistance rating. The nice thing about having passive damage resistance is like this, not tied to other traits or abilities, is that even after you get sub-nuked or your buffs are stripped in some other way, you still retain at least some damage resistances instead of dropping to zero or even into the negatives. Spending a lot of time at low resistance value usually means a very quick death. In that same vein, the next uh, engineering console I have is a Pax Triburnium that adds a good chunk of hull capacity as well as resistances against all the common energy weapon damage types. This doesn't help much against other Psy Spam builds, but one of the common tactics in PvP is for a Psy ship to hold you down while a beam overload escort flies in and hits you really hard. And this can make that tactic a little bit less effective, although you might still be in trouble if you're really locked down. Next, I have Sustained Radiant Field from the Iconian Rep. The bonus to outgoing heals is the main reason. It increases the effectiveness of plot armor as well as all other heals on board, since it's a percent increase. I talk about healing at length in one of my guide videos, but it's a pretty big buff. I also chose this because it's really easy to obtain from the Iconian Rep. It forms a two-piece with the advanced radiant beam that I have in the front that increases the amount of temporary hull that I get from that proc. Uh, obviously, if you have something like the Troyus console or regenerative integrity field, uh, those are both a little bit better than this, but also cost either Zen or an Epic Phoenix token, so not everyone has that option. Uh, my next few consoles are more offensively oriented. I have Hostile Acquisition. Uh, which I use on a lot of builds. The hold effect is very effective and it's also an interrupt, so if someone uses DPRM or something like that and you put hostile on them, it actually breaks that buff. Uh, and it also slows enemies down and lowers their resistances, plus a passive 30 control expertise, as well as accuracy, although uh, accuracy is not that important on this kind of build. Uh, jumping to my universal slots, I have a Car's Vengeance and the Tholian Web Spinner. These both came from events last year or so, and they're very effective. Web Spinner has another hold effect and increases the damages your enemy takes. Uh, and a Cars has a very strong electrical hit that completely bypasses shields, does some damage over time, and disables subsystems as a secondary effect. If you miss these events, there's plenty of other options depending on your budget. Uh, for example, Isometric Charge is dirt cheap and deals a large electrical damage hit just like a Cars. Uh, approaching Agony they gave away for uh, in codes this year, and it's a nice debuff and disable effect. Um, there's really lots of options, and if you have you know lots of other ships unlocked, or if you have the 12th anniversary bundle or something like that, cascading subatomic disruptions or cascading gravimetric disruptions both do a lot of damage, and they scale with EPG, so that's a really good choice on a build like this also. Uh, moving on to the next two. Offensive Universal Consoles, I have Plasma Storm from the Maquis Raider. This console not only deals a lot of continuous damage and lasts a long time, 30 seconds, uh, but it has a slow effect as well and a pull that's not shown on the tooltip. Uh, you can test this by dropping a Plasma Storm near some NPCs and you can see them get sucked into it. The pull applies to players as well, although it's not usually enough on its own. 
in control builds like this, you have to layer multiple slows and multiple pull repel effects to slow people down. And many players have gotten very good at keeping their speed up and staying elusive, so it's a constant, you know, struggle. Uh, the next console is Parasitic Ice, which holds enemies in place for a while when it impacts them. Most players have learned to get out of this by now, but it's very cheap on the exchange and it's still useful. Even if you only get a player stuck in the ice for a few seconds, that gives you time to line up other abilities. One of my personal favorite tactics is to ice someone, then immediately drop Plasma Storm and Gravity Well on top of them, and if I'm close enough, maybe a Tractor Beam too. If it works out, even if they break the ice, they're still stuck there from all the other control effects because I've been able to focus them in the same spot. The next three consoles are all Fleet, Embassy, Hull Repair consoles. And I really debated whether or not to put these here, so personal taste will probably have a lot to do with whether this works for you. Since this ship lacks intel, I thought a little extra healing could be useful, and these also boost science stats. In this case, I have two with Control X and one with EPG, but you could also use Drain X or whatever combination you feel works best. Alternatively, you could go more aggressive by using Fleet Research Lab consoles, which come in different variations of Control, Drain, EPG, or even Shield Capacity. I've done some messing around with 4 or 5 Drain times 2 Research Lab consoles, and it turns the Drain from Spore Infused Anomalies into a pretty big annoyance, although that Drain gets instantly cleared if someone activates Science Team, so it's very situational. Another option is instead of any fleet consoles, just use more universal consoles here. They could be more defensive ones like Molecular Phase Inversion or DPRM, or offensive ones like Neutronic Eddies from last year's RISA event. Really what works best for you depends a lot on your own playstyle and what you have access to already. Obviously some of you who may not have flown a science PvP ship don't really have a playstyle yet, but just think about what kind of universal consoles have something that benefits this type of build. Th something that has a disable or a hold, damage that scales with EPG, or barring that, consoles that increase things you're already using on the ship. For example, I have Plasma Storm and an inhibiting secondary deflector, so that's plasma damage and radiation damage. So maybe I should slot the Fakiri Torment engine, which I can just go grab for free from a mission, and that console boosts both radiation and plasma damage by almost 40% when upgraded, so that's a really good option. My best advice here is just ask questions, uh, bring up the page on the STO wiki that has all of the universal consoles listed on it and check them out, see what they do, and of course test things. You know, go into arenas, go into Karat, and actually try out different things. If it's not working, then make a change. And also keep in mind that, you know, what works for one fight maybe won't work for the next one. Um, which is also why I carry a lot of consoles around in my inventory, because I'm always changing stuff too. Um, you know, all these builds are works in progress, and that's just part of the game. My last two console slots are more on the defensive side. I have the Alachi Rift Jump console to escape from trouble, but if you miss that event, just use the Fluidic Phase Decoupler instead. It's almost the exact same console and available on the exchange. Then I have the console that came on this ship in the same bundle, the Ablative Generator. This console lasts 15 seconds and has a cooldown of only one minute after that first 15 seconds is up. It grants the highest damage resistance in the entire game with 900 bonus damage resistance. So sitting here otherwise unbuffed and activating this console pushes my resistances up pushes my resistances up to 95% or so across the board. That's pretty awesome. It does take energy weapons and shields offline while active though, and it can be deactivated early if someone uses a hold against you while it's on, so keep that in mind. While it's active though, you're very hard to kill, and you can fire torpedoes and use science abilities and universal consoles normally, so it's really useful on a build like this where the energy weapons going offline doesn't really matter. My hangar pet is Elite Orion Interceptors. I'm very fond of these. They have a tractor beam, uh, weapons and engine drain beam, chronoton torpedoes, so they work really well with the theme of this build, which is slowing and controlling enemy ships. Another good option might be the Mirror Universe shuttles. 
Uh, those only have a tractor beam, but they also have beam overload 3 and deal a pretty good amount of damage. Uh, the only issue there is with pet AI, they don't always shoot what you have targeted, so they might be shooting other random enemies or pets around you and not really helping you. So it's, it's a little bit shaky, but still, on a build like this one where you just have one hanger and I don't have any traits or anything dedicated to it, I just spam spawning the pets and otherwise really ignore it. Um, if they give me an edge, that's great, but I don't really expect very much from them. Uh, I'll do a proper carrier build maybe in another video. For the skill trees this time, I have command set as my primary. Uh, that's for boost morale so I can get rid of the pesky evade target locks and other disable effects. And as a little change of pace, I have pilot set as my secondary this time. Uh, Miracle Worker might be the safer choice, but I wanted to try something a little different, and since I'm forced into a tactical seat anyway on this ship, uh, I am using attack pattern beta, and with pilot as secondary, using attack patterns grants a decent chunk of temporary hull, um, so it makes me just a little bit harder to kill. Uh, and it also gives me 50% of my base speed, even while my engines are offline. Uh, so that's actually pretty nice, especially when someone knocks your engines offline, maybe with viral engines or viral matrix or something else, um, to help you kind of get out of trouble. And it also buffs uh, evasive maneuvers, making them give you an immunity to movement impairing effects for two seconds. Two seconds isn't very long, but that's still really nice. And a little bit different from a lot of other specs, Pilot has an active ability even when set as secondary. And I haven't finished the rest of the tree yet, but uh, this one, Rock and Roll, it can be used every 60 seconds, makes you immune to damage and slow effects for about four seconds. And even though it says it sets your turn rate to zero, uh, I am still able to turn my ship while I'm in Rock and Roll. It's been years since I used this ability, but I'm pretty sure it used to lock you into moving directly ahead. So being able to turn now is pretty great. And uh, just for kicks, let me show that off. So here's my ship. There we go. <laughs> All right, so it's a little inconsistent, but for whatever reason, you can turn while in rock and roll. I guess with a certain arrangement of buffs, maybe pilot team or maybe after using invasive maneuver, something something's going on there. I guess I'll have to test that later. Anyway. All right, so on to the traits. And I'm gonna try to split these up a little bit by cost. Uh, I have conservation of energy that's bonus exotic damage after taking energy damage, uh, and all science captains get that for free. Uh, then I have give your all, which dodges 20% of incoming damage after using engineering abilities and particle manipulator. Uh, those are both also free by doing the R&D schools up to level 15. And then I have redirected armor plating, which is free from a single player episode. Uh, that's a really good one because you get that 30 damage resistance instantly whenever you take damage from any arc besides the front. So even if you get nuked or something like that and all your buffs are gone, you get this 30 all damage resistance immediately back because in PvP you're always taking damage from, you know, multiple sides. So that's a really good one to have. Probably better than uh, Context is for Kings in some cases. Uh, then I've got a few lockbox traits. I have Biotech Patch that adds 20% to all hull healing. That includes Bridge Officer healing as well as traits like Plot Armor healing. Then I have Fresh from r and &R, which helps immensely at clearing control effects. Uh, and it makes you immune to control for 3 seconds every 45. It doesn't seem like much, but it does add up. And more importantly, being able to activate team abilities every uh, 10 seconds instead of 15 can sometimes make or break, uh, you know, save you from a death basically. Uh, or a teammate, you know, if you throw a science team on a teammate or engineering team on a teammate, that's in trouble. Then I have intelligence agent attache. That's for faster captain ability recharge times. That's a really good one to have. I have reconstructive radiation, which gives a pretty big heal 
uh, as well as clears damage over time effects uh, automatically. Previously I was using Miracle Worker as my secondary specialization for this, but uh, this kind of does a similar thing, but it doesn't clear drains. Uh, Miracle Worker does clear drains, so that's kind of a little bit of a trade-off there. Uh, and then I have Unconventional Systems, which when using control abilities allows me to use my Universal Consoles more often, and depending on how many Universal Consoles you have, that could be absolutely critical to a build like this. And since I'm an alien, I have one extra trait slot, and that's the Boimler effect. Uh, so that one, really, really good for, uh, you know, getting maximum cooldowns for all abilities. As for starship traits, we're focusing primarily around the gravity well. So I have Temporal Anchor from the 10th Anniversary Bundle. That's the red gravity well that adds the cooldown ticks to enemy ships and can be really, really annoying for them. Uh, the extra radiation damage isn't all that noticeable, but it's there. Spore Infused Anomalies has a nice electrical damage and also drains power levels for 20 seconds. Uh, so a couple of Spore Infused procs can drain a pretty good amount uh, and improve Gravity Well. And the reason for improved Gravity Well, besides the damage resistance debuff, is essentially the Gravity Wells last 40 seconds long and you can use them every 40 seconds. So it's basically infinite Gravity Well and the Aftershock Gravity Wells also benefit from this trait as well as uh, Temporal Anchor. So with the uh, Aftershock Gravity Wells, you could have multiple Gravity Wells that last 40 seconds long apiece, uh, which is you know really useful for catching enemies like that. Basically, it's like casting a big net and hoping someone flies in and gets stuck. My primary source of healing on this build is the Polarized Lattice Optimized Tritanium Armor, or what I've been calling Plot Armor this whole time. It's a, you know an abbreviation there for Plot Armor. And you can see with the other equipment that I've set up, this trait heals almost my entire hull capacity over 15 seconds. It clears all hazard and damage over time effects, plus 250 damage resistance rating over the duration. The biggest detractor is that it only occurs once every 45 seconds. So there's a 30 second window where this build lacks healing and some resistances. On a build with Intel, I might try to line up my Intel team or other defensive measures during that downtime. And this build is no different really. There's a reason why I don't have a blade of generator on my spam bar. If I see the icon for plot armor lockout on my buff bar, then that's a good time to activate this console to cover up some time that I'm not healing. Of course, the way this build is currently set up with the fleet embassy consoles, it might not be as necessary, but the setup's very defensive right now. If I start to add more damage and play more aggressively, it's worth remembering that I have that big gap where I'm more vulnerable. The next trait is invasive maneuvers from the Alachi frigate. This trait hel helps slip out of holds and slows like parasitic ice. Since it activates on evasives, it can be used very often, especially with the duty officer that recharges evasive maneuvers. If I didn't have this trait, I might consider something like Improved Photonic Officer, which boosts both my damage and healing, perfect for this build, or maybe something like Carrier Wave Shield Hacking, since I'm using a tractor beam anyway, or even Team Synergy to help clear teammates' buffs off when I'm near them or other defensive options like Shield Overload from the Sagittarius. Really, think of this build as more of a loose template, and it's going to depend more on what you already have available. Since we're talking around the 10th Anniversary Bundle, maybe a trait like Make It So from the Ross might work. A rough estimate should be that it provides about 18% increased healing and damage. And it's not the best trait ever, but it's part of the bundle that everyone already has, and in, you know it would be easy to slot on this ship. My reputation traits are mostly defensive. I have automated protomatter conduits, which provides a large amount of hull regen, aux power defensive configuration for more resistances and hull capacity, advanced hull reinforcement, which is bonus damage resistance rating, viral engines overload, which is my only real offensive choice. It disables enemy engines for a few seconds when I land a critical and evasive tactics which helps get out of control effects every 45 seconds or so and bringing it together i have the bridge officer layout starting with the engineering seats i'm cycling emergency power to shields and emergency power to engines 
Speed is important, and a little extra shield hardness never hurt either. Plus, both of these work in concert with a duty officer that clears debuffs, which I'll show in a moment. Uh, then of course I have auxiliary the dampers to be immune to disable effects like evade target lock, and engineering team which is mainly used to clear subsystem offline debuffs and similar things. Since this seat is a pilot spec seat, very unique for a science ship, I also have pilot team 2. This clears movement debuffs for 4 seconds every 10 and gives me a bit more speed and maneuverability. Alternatively, you could use something like reverse shield polarity or hold together here, or on the more offensive side you could slot attack pattern lambda which would give you more perception and help target against stealth ships like intel team users. In my tactical seats I have torpedo spread 1. For those of you who aren't aware, torpedo spread is a guaranteed hit. Accuracy and defense don't factor, so since I'm using that chroniton torpedo and the plasma emission torpedo as part of this build, this makes sure I at least land some torpedo hits and get those effects applied on enemies. I do wish this were a universal seat, but this is at least a good way to use it. The next slot is attack pattern beta, which gives me some temporary hull thanks to the pilot specialization and lowers enemy resistances as well as their stealth. It's only 120 less stealth at this rank, but that's pretty good and benefits the whole team attacking that target instead of just me, and negative 30 damage resistance adds up pretty quickly, especially with other sources of damage resistance debuff on this build, like the inhibiting omni and the command spec Achilles heal. That's a total of negative 65 debuff, not including anything else from consoles or the negative 20 from improved gravity well on the primary target. Of course, if I use attack pattern lambda, I wouldn't use beta here. Um, probably I'd use torpedo spread 2 and maybe put tactical team in that first slot. The next two seats are science seats, and I'm not using any miracle worker abilities. I have science team, of course, to clear debuffs, then scramble sensors, which is mainly here as a control effect to improve cooldowns of universal consoles. Then I have very cold in space 3 and gravity well 3. Both of these are anomalies as far as spore infused is concerned, so dropping both of these on a target and then activating a few more science abilities is a good way to put out a good amount of damage and stack some drain on a target. The extra flight speed reduction and friction from very cold also helps gravity well keep pulling enemies and gets them stuck better. In my other seat I have tractor beam 1 and I'm using the 23rd century variant because it's a little bit harder to see. Uh, especially in the heat of combat, some players uh, maybe who have a counter to tractor beam won't use it because they don't notice. Uh, and then photonic officer, which is here just to improve my cooldowns, uh, especially in conjunction with the Boimler effect. And I mentioned some of these duty officers already, but I have the con officer that recharges evasive maneuvers after using emergency power to engines. That one is really, really good, especially with invasive maneuvers, the Alachi trait. Um, because basically you can use that Alachi Rift escape thing every, uh, I think it's 25 seconds or 20 seconds is the global cooldown on evasive, so it's really, really useful. Uh, I also have 21 of 47. That officer increases the damage over time by 50% when using engineering abilities. I don't have any temporal abilities, so that doesn't matter. Uh, honestly, there's probably better DOFs to use here, but I grabbed this one really, really cheap on the exchange. Um, I don't remember how much exactly, and the prices on Borg Duffs fluctuate wildly, but uh, I thought it seemed pretty good, and that increase of damage over time improves the secondary deflector, uh, as well as some other things, so it's just really nice to have. Uh, and then I have a Warp Core Engineer. This is the one I was talking about with the emergency power abilities. Anytime you use any emergency power ability, you have this chance to remove all debuffs, so cycling two emergency power abilities basically means every 15 seconds I stand a pretty good chance at clearing all debuffs and that can pretty much save your life in a fight. Um, there are blue and green variants of this doff so you know keep your eyes peeled for those especially since they're not all that expensive. A lot of players that have these don't really know what they are and they you know sell them for pennies so grab one until everybody catches on. Uh, or I also have the Matter Antimatter Specialist. Uh, this duty officer makes Aux to Damp last longer uh, and adds some damage resistance to that. 
the only reason I have a purple here is I had it from a long time ago. I know these got really expensive lately. Uh, and I would be just as happy with a blue or a green. Um, so don't feel like you have to go out and spend a whole lot on a purple. The only real difference between the green, blue, and purple is you get a tiny bit more damage resistance rating with the purple, but it's really not a lot in the grand scheme of things. Uh, on the more offensive side, I have the purple gravimetric scientist that every character gets for free. Um, this one creates those aftershock gravity wells that I mentioned, and if you're lucky and all four of these proc, uh, and it has happened to me before, you could have five gravity wells uh, all surrounding the same enemy, and they're all temporal anchor, and they all last 40 seconds, and they all count for spore infused, so it's really uh, super effective. This is a great duty officer, uh, especially when you're lucky enough to have it work. And then I have a biologist uh, that increases the recharge t uh, power recharge speed of enemies when I use scramble sensors on them. Uh, and you'll notice here on the fifth tray, uh, right here, I have parasitic ice, and then gravity well, very cold in space, plasma storm, and then scramble sensors. Uh, and they're in that order for a reason. Basically, I try to get somebody stuck in gravity well, uh, and if I get a few aftershocks, even better. Um, and then their, you know, cooldowns on their bars are ticking, and then I hit them with scramble sensors with this doff, and, you know, it screws them up only for a few seconds, but, you know, 10 seconds is a long time to have longer recharge times on in PvP. Um, this officer is cleared by science team, by the way, so anyone who has science team can just use it and clear this off, but uh, obviously the ideal situation is you force someone to use science team early, then use this against them while their science team is on cooldown, and then they're screwed for a little bit unless a teammate helps them out. Uh, so that's really good. And, uh, and overall, just, you know, I think it's a pretty solid build and gets people on the right track. Obviously, there's a lot of things you can customize. You could port this build over to an Intel ship, like the Scryer or the Damash or the Anorax or that uh, Cardassian. Uh, dreadnought. There's there's lots of ways to really make this work. Um, so I think you know this will let you jump straight into endgame PvP, basically with just the tenth anniversary bundle. And I know I have a few lobby pieces like the invincible trait and plasma storm, a couple of other Zen store items. But considering how often I see people flying around in tenth anniversary ships, I don't think it's too much of a stretch to think that a lot of players could put together a build like this or very close to it, and have a pretty good time in PvP. So uh, good luck out there, and thanks for watching.